So hey everyone, here's how to use a shake to create three types of Z shakes which are regular, hard or blurry and paired with X, Y and tilt. Presets are available in the description. As always, thank you so much to my monthly supporters who are Envy, 2Crisp, Mark Hinch and Dazai Edits. Shake 1, regular. So first things first, prepare your clip. Mine is right here, it's already twixted and I'm going to add on S shake. Often sapphire effects don't work on adjustment layers so I add them directly onto the clip. Now change the following settings, so frequency should be 2, scroll down and open up the X and Y shake and what we're going to do is set the first two values for both to zero so for the X RAND amp I'm going to set that to zero same goes for the RAND frequency and the same applies to the Y shake just like that you can now close these up so just click on the arrows and open up the Z shake change the Z RAND amp to 300 and now what we're going to do is keyframe the amplitude at the very top so hit the stopwatch do make sure you are at the start and what you want to do is head to the end now so 5 10 15 20 keyframes for me and then just head one keyframe back. I keep saying keyframes, I mean frames. Keyframes are these little dots that we created. Anyway, set the amplitude to zero and you're going to graph this. So open up the graph on the left and just pull the handle for the right keyframe all the way to the left and push it slightly down and making sure it's on level just there like that. So now you'll get a smooth curve. So it should turn out looking like this, which actually isn't the result that I want. It's too soft. So what we need to do is scroll all the way down back to the Z shake and increase the RAND frequency. The amp controls how far the shake travels and the frequency controls how strong it is. So we're going to increase this to two. And already you're going to notice that the impact is much stronger than before. For a greater impact, head all the way to the beginning of your clip. And what you want to do is change the Z phase. You might I need to increase or decrease it but keep changing it until it's zoomed in like that the more scaled in it looks the better it will be so for me 1.1 actually works very well but now there is no impact at all so what we need to do is just increase the random frequency again so i'm going to go for 2.5 and it still looks horrible so let's head all the way to the top and change the frequency and by frequency i mean the main frequency next to amplitude not the one for z shake the one at the very top so we're going to change it to four and now we've got a very strong shake like that it's a bit stiff so what i'm going to do is slightly decrease the round amp for the Z shake just there to around two and this is the result which looks pretty nice you're probably wondering why did i make it so complicated your shake is not going to look identical to mine so what you need to do is play around with the settings and find what is best for your frame rate or sequence or even your clip so don't be afraid to mess around with the frequency the Z phase and also the amps frequencies or even the graphs as well shake two blurry this time what we're going to do is again apply a shake and then set the frequency to two just follow the same method that i did at the start so x random zero same goes for the y and i've just realized that you don't need to change the rand frequencies as the rand amp is set to zero so it has no effect close both of these and now what we're going to do is not change the rand amp but the wave amp this setting creates a very linear shake so it follows a specific pattern so let me show you what i mean if i set it to 300 and then set the wave frequency to one keyframe that and then head to the end one keyframe back zero graph let go do you see how it looks very smooth compared to the other one the shake is very fluid because it's not random which is what rand stands for i'm actually going to scroll all the way up and change the frequency to three instead of two once again i'm going to decrease or increase the z phase so that it looks like it's been scaled in i think that looks perfect and this is the result of the shake now we just need to add the directional blur if you have s shake you'll have this effect called blur directional drag it onto your clip now copy be down my settings so keyframe all of these at the beginning head one keyframe ahead set it to 75 35 negative 0 0.5 ahead 55 70 1.2 25 0 negative 0 0.2 then one last frame ahead and set it all to zero like that so now you'll get something that looks like a twitch shake you can further improve this by changing the shift at the very start to something like let's say five move one keyframe ahead and then set this to negative one. Actually, let's go for negative five as well. And now the impact should be much stronger like that. If you want to, you can always copy this over like that. If you just right click, click on copy onto your other shakes. So for example, the one we made at the very start and it will look like this, but it's a bit stiff, which is why I used a different example. But let's move on to the final example. Shake three, head with X, Y and tilt. I should have mentioned this at the beginning, but rather than changing the settings again and again, you can create a preset. So for example, let's say I've got this frequency at two. I can right click on the S shake effect and click on save preset, then just save it. So every time I import it from the effects tab, it's going to apply the same settings. What I'm going to do is copy the first shake I made for the first clip and just paste it over to my third one. I'm going to try and pair this shake with the X shake. So I think I'll go for wave amp instead of random just for that smoothness. So we 
could set it to something like let's say 25 and then set the frequency to 1 and already you'll notice it's in effect there's a slight bounce to the left and right let's increase it a little maybe 40 and then 1.2 which looks like this let's add on some tilt for this one i'm going to use the random so i'm going to set it to 0.5 and then set the ran frequency to 0. Point, let's go for 25 it's not very noticeable so i might have to increase it a bit let's go for 0. 0.5 for that and then 0. 0.75 for the rand amp and let's see how that turned out still not very noticeable let's go for two instead still nothing okay let's go for 12. i'm gonna bump up the rand frequency to one as well that looks pretty nice. I know it's very subtle, meaning you can't notice it as much, but it's a nice little piece of detail. We can always increase it anyway to like, let's say 18. So now it's a little more visible. You can see the tilt on it. Also, this is optional, but if you scroll all the way up, you can turn on the motion blur by checking this box. However, I do recommend turning down the motion blur length because you can see it looks horrible. There's too much blur and it ruins the shake, unless this is the kind of style that you want to go for. But I would recommend turning it down to something like 0.5. That's the wrong setting. I was meant to change this one down here, 0.5 or even 0.25 and it just adds that little bit of motion blur around the edges and these are the results if you would like to buy these presets and also the project file it's only 149 dollars and if you use the code shake you get 20 percent off until the end of january anyways thank you for watching peace